and Cyber here. <clears throat> so, one, I did not record yesterday because I didn't have access to my laptop. I'm sorry to that. But I had to bring all my stuff, my electronics, all that. That included my laptop, my PS4, whatever else to a different location because I will be house sitting for my, my grandmother for a week. Uh, but this means I have a, a more or less a private place to record, more or less secluded area. So I will have some more time to record every now and again without worry of others interrupting. Secondly, uh, this will technically be, should be a continuation of the last part that I did for Berserker Armor. Because I did cut it short because how long is this getting and such last part. That and I had some other stuff going on at that moment too, so I am sorry to say that. Uh, but we will... Uh, start off with Deku cleaning off Blood Arkham. Thinking about the events that have led up to this moment. So him thinking about how Chloe and him nearly died from that large beast-like man. To when they, well, did it in the woods in a hollowed out tree. And even the with Skull Knight showing up. Remembering what all he said. And because they were also lost, they have to cut the, the camp short. Because, well, two students were lost. And because there was a wild man-like beast there. So who knows what else is there. But as Deku's washing off the blood, the... They hear screaming coming from outside. So, Deku rushes outside, covering himself quickly with some pants on, running out there. Seeing what's going on, so a Nomu, or so two Nomus are attacking with some other League of mem LOV members. So, with muscular landing nearby. And throwing a tree at his hour. Deku rushes to him as fast as he could with Wonderfall, pushing them out of the way, taking the tree and getting knocked out. Get whoever you can. As Darby is firing at the at the students. So, as and mustard is firing a gun. And Zyra manages to dodge whatever attacks the LOV members get, but get grazed by a bullet by Mustard. As Spinner Magni attacks the Wild Wild Pussycats with a cannon, and Compress grabs Bakya, who was distracted. So he was going to go after Deku, but stops when Chloe and Todoroki blocks his way. So, so, and everyone starts to prepare for a fight with Kogu by appearing behind the league members. Everyone escapes through it except for Muscular to, to end what he, they started and to have a bit more fun. As Kurigi warps away. <laughs> so, I guess I'm gonna have my fun after all. So, as Muscular prepares to fight, they hear a large person land behind him. They turn around and see a mortal Zod. I've seen enough. 
holding as much as uh, Zard is holding a dead moonfish in his hands. He grabs Muscular by the head and and he couldn't react as he rips off the head of Muscular. Then he looks at the students who are very, very much more on guard and terrified of the presence of him. As he just looks at Deku. <laughs> uh, I told you all this warning. So as a warning, if this, if you are this man's friend, points at Deku, and you are considered more than that, then know this. When this man loses everything, when this man whole world crumbles, he will become a true monster and become death incarnate and will destroy everyone and kill all in his path. And I can't wait to fight him when he does all of this. <clears throat> he opens up his wings and takes off. As everyone was shocked, Surprised to hear. They looked at Deku and thinking, could that be true? So. <clears throat> As we cut to hours later, Deku's slowly waking up. Eyes. Our uh, eyes still closed. Uh. Let me guess, I'm in a hospital, and you're right next to me, aren't you? No, I'm in front of you this time. Deku opened up his eye to see Chloe in front of him. Eh, yeah, close enough. So what happened how I got knocked out, and what's bothering you? Zod appeared after you fainted. Zod? Did he hurt anyone? A couple of scared... People and killing one of the vil two of the villains, but otherwise we're all fine. Well, what did he do or wanted? Did he mess with anything else? He came to give us a warning. A warning? A warning about what? About you, kid. Deku looks to the side and see in the open doorway as Zara's standing there. About me? Something about you losing everything, becoming a monster. Deku thinks for a moment and his fifth thoughts goes to the darkness of the armor. Right. Izuku? Yeah? I'm wanting to get stronger without you. Alright, so you don't want to train with me anymore? Not for a while. I see. Wish you the best in your training then. Thanks. This is not a thing to do personal, but... So I can't get stronger if I'm blind on you. Right, I understand. Is there and you welcome for taking the tree for you? Call it even for what you did. Do you mind? And Chloe, can you help me out here? I mean, we're the one who wanted to do it. I didn't, don't know what you were talking about. Traitor. Ugh. So what are you doing here, Mr. Azara? You don't only don't visit me while I'm in the hospital. One, you saved me and my daughter. Two, I'm sure you don't try to run off. Huh? Run off? By what? After you were knocked out, Bakugo was kidnapped. I see. Alright. Hmm, kind of figured you'd so, so get upset and run off. In what world would I be upset about his capture? 
because you were knocked out by a villain and then caused the other to be kidnapped? Watch it. Getting knocked out was me saving your ass. And if me getting knocked out is the cause for others being captured, they need to fix every problem, then they can't possibly be heroes. I'm just saying, I thought you would be upset at all. But now, since it's not needed here, I'm heading off to UA. Fine. As Ara leaves, as they two just staying quiet. So, they just talked and for a while, talking about how what eating at both of them. Nothing really major. As they just kind of stayed the night in the hospital room. When I try to go to Deku, but to get him to help, but he wasn't interested at all. So without Deku's help, Kirishima and, well, any others who wanted to go didn't because they figured he'd be a good choice to help. Eventually Deku went back to bed, not really caring as much. The all for one fight would happen the same. So, but another development would happen as well. As Deku wakes up, he sees Chloe not in the room. Ch not sure what's going on. Because normally he, she wouldn't leave without his know-how. So looking around, but seeing that there's just a void around him, a dark void, again, he's back in one for all, seeing the armor of the demon staring back at him this time, telling him, so, it has begun. He wakes up violently, looking around, seeing Chloe in the corner. Chloe? What? What's going on? Why do you look so dreadful? I'm sorry, Zuku. He hugs him after walking up to him, crying slightly. Huh? About what? If it's about uh, something I did wrong, it's, uh, if I it was something about I did wrong, I'm sorry. No, not that. It, it's your mother, Zuku. What about her? Sh she's dead. What? We don't know. We tried to call her up here to get her to visit, but I got on a check on her, but when I found her, she, she was dead. It, it seems like her throat was cut out. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Chloe just cried and hugging him tighter, while repeating, I'm sorry. Deku's eye started to glow bright than ever before, and all the sound just died out as he hears nothing. So, the armor, the demon and the armor, so, continue to say, it's your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault! Louder and louder. As the armor slowly creeps onto him. But Chloe uses her cork on him and violently shakes him. Deku snaps out of it. Uh, Chloe? Please don't shut me out. I, I know it's my fault, but, but... No, it's not your fault. It it's mine. My mother, sh I should have been there. I never... Got to say goodbye. It's no one's fault. How about that? Sir. Sir. Deku just thinks, no, it's my fault. If I didn't pursue this foolish childish dream, I, I could have protected her. Can I ask when we're going to have the funeral? Two weeks. Remember, it's no one's fault. Alright. I'm going back to bed. Alright, Suku. I'm going to head out. Alright, I'll, I'll see you later. Chloe leaves as Deckard lays back down. And just turns over. The beats inside the armor says to him in his mind. Of course it's your fault. You needed to play hero, save others, when you could have saved your own mother. You need me, or we will let your mother killer go free? No. You're right. I need to get the fucker who killed her. I need to keep Chloe safe and she isn't safe around me. I need to leak. Two weeks later. Deku has been mostly unresponsive and lost in his mind. No matter what others tried to do to help him, it didn't matter. He didn't eat or drink much. Chloe tried to do everything to turn him back to what he once was, but to no avail. In the day of the funeral, people said announce it's said the people who are doing the announcements for this funeral is as hour midnight. Some of class attendance for this is as hour midnight. Deku, Chloe, Nezu, most of you, UA staff, and All Might himself. But Deku did have was stare off into space, not listening to what anyone was saying, but his eye was glowing softly the whole time. The whole time he was hearing his voice, the demon in the armor, over and over again, it's your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. I know. Please. Stop. I know it's my fault. Just make it stop. Then let's go. Huh? Go where? Make your menace with the one who you care for. And find who did it. And kill them. You're right. As Deku watches Inko being buried, Chloe tries to grab Deku's hand, but who pulls away and walks away. Chloe was going to go after him, but Midnight grabs her by the shoulder. Maybe he should need to be alone for a while. Give him some time. Uh, Alright. They continued the funeral, and with Deku and him packing, putting, so writing up a resignation for Nezu. 
and when he was done, he didn't know what to do about Chloe. To have one last good moment before leaving her. So he waited in his room and hide his thing, a bag, and away. So it wouldn't look like he was leaving. As Chloe entered the room, Deku puts on a weak smile. Is you view? Are you okay? Yeah. I'm just coming to turn that she's gone, so I'll I have no one left other than you, Chloe. That's not true. You have friends. You have my mom, my dad. You have All Might. Zuku? Deku thing. All the more reasons to leave so I don't have don't lose anyone else. Right. I talked to Melissa how to deal with the grief. She gave me a few steps and things to do that she said it hard at the first, but it will get better. Deku lies. He never talked to Melissa, but he just wanted to make Chloe feel better. Chloe just hugged him tightly, and they both laid on the bed. And they stayed like that for the time being. Chloe eventually fell asleep, and Deku looked at the time. 11.56 p.m. Deku got up and puts a pillow where Chloe was hugging him and left a note for her. He walked out to Nezu's office and drops in a letter underneath the door. Deku turns around and walks out. As he was walking out, Seth he puts on the armor and runs off as fast as he can with one foil charging him. From afar, a skinny blonde man was watching him. Young Medoya, I'm sorry. In another direction, a man in black armor, a skull for a helmet and on a horseback, follows him. End of this part. Hope you guys enjoyed.